We're now going to find the variance of the uniform distribution. And of course, the uniform distribution has probability density function 1 over b minus a, which is a constant. So we're using this formula, which works for any continuous random variable. We have the variance of the uniform distribution is given by the integral of x squared multiplied by the probability density function. So obviously that's x squared multiplied by 1 over b minus a integrate with respect to x, but then we're going to take off the mean squared. And from an earlier video when we found the mean, hopefully you remember the mean was a half b plus a, so we're going to take off b plus a all squared over 4. Now this first integral, let's bring the constant out the front. So 1 over b minus a out the front. I forgot to mention the limits are going to be as they were when we were finding the mean. We're going to integrate over the whole interval from a to b. So back to the integral now, we're integrating x squared. So obviously that is a third x cubed between limits a and b. I'm going to still be taking off b plus a all squared over 4. Let's set the limits in 1 over b minus a and then we have b cubed over 3 take a cubed over 3 and of course don't forget we need to take off the mean squared now let's focus on this first term. Now the numerator here, b cubed minus a cubed, can actually be factorised. And one of the factors is b minus a. So I'm going to factorise b cubed minus a cubed. So that's the fraction that was still there in the first place. Now b minus a is a factor. b cubed minus a cubed. Let's work out what the quadratic factor will be that we're left with. Obviously this will still all be over 3, and we'll still take off the mean squared. So this is going to be a quadratic factor. To get b cubed, obviously the first term needs to be b squared. Let's go to the other end to get minus a cubed then we have to end with a plus a squared here. Now if we work out the middle term, we can do that by noting that we won't have any b squared times a or b times a squared. So if we expanded what we have at the moment, we'd have minus a b squared, but we don't want any a b squared, so I'm going to need a plus a b in here. Because when we expand that times that will give us a plus a b squared to go with the minus a b squared. Of course, to make that zero. Just to check, we also don't want any. We also don't want any a squared b's, and they'll come from here. So that's minus a squared b, and there plus a squared b, which cancel out as we want. So we factorised b cubed minus a cubed. You can see we have a common factor of b minus a, which cancels. And now we're going to put these two things over a common denominator, and let's expand b plus a all squared. So I'm going to put them over 12, which would mean this one needs a 4. Let's expand as well, so it'll be 4b squared plus 4ab plus 4a squared and needs times the top bottom of the other one by 3. And I'm going to expand the brackets at the same time. So minus 3b squared. Expanding this gives us 2ab, so it'll be minus 6ab and a plus a squared. And we need Remember to times it by minus 3. 
And we can put all that over 12. Collecting like terms, we have 4b squared, take away 3b squared, which is obviously b squared. We've got 4ab, take away 6ab. We've got 4a squared, take away 3a squared, which is positive 1a squared. And this numerator, hopefully you recognize, but can be factorized. It's a perfect square, b minus a. L squared over 12. So there we have the formula for the variance of the uniform distribution.